sharing. Say we started. All right, let's go. I just realized that I need to, once we're going, this is gonna start doing my voice, so I need to exit out of it. Okay, now we're ready to go. Awesome. Um, welcome everybody to our Sunday Night Live. Tonight we're going to have uh, Fred Ramey uh, talking about his experience in a, how he's a yang and everybody and promoting UBI on a clubhouse, the kind of new hip app everybody's talking about. So we're just gonna take a few minutes to go through some upcoming stuff for the moment. Um, so start with a few upcoming events, some cash advocacy accent, uh, actions, a um, little bit of candidate support starting out. And I might even ask Kyle if he has anything coming up since he's on here um, and I know he's running for something. Um, and then our next hang, our next Sunday night live will be on March 28th. But after this Sunday night live, we're bringing back the, the Arizona's Talks with Toxins. Um, so we're gonna go into a Talks with Toxins after this, which is, uh, you know, bring your favorite toxin, whatever that may be. Um, and then we're probably gonna, we're gonna turn that into like the alternating week. Since these are happening bi-weekly now, we'll have like the Talks with Toxins one week. And then I kind of like interview guest uh, speaker, the alternating week, uh, so on. So we'll have something happening every Sunday night then. Um, you know, just a little recap of who Humanity First Movement is. If you're watching the live stream, you're not familiar with us. We're a group of volunteers from Andrew Yang's 2020 campaign that just like really believed in the mission and the values. So once, you know, he stopped his uh, campaign and withdrew, we were like, well, we're not stopping. So the Humanity First Movement kind of just grew out of that energy. And so now we're just kind of, trying to support uh, Humanity First candidates that are out there, you know, lead and support any Humanity First policies and initiatives, a lot of UBI and cash advocacy, ranked choice voting, um, building up some organizing in the states, and just generally like connecting and hanging out with each other. If you don't know how to connect with us, there's a lot of options all over social media, come on into the Slack, find your state. Um, if you want to get to these slides so you can click on the links directly, just use that bit.ly slash HFM, then the date, so 03-14-2021, and I'll take you to the slides and you can click on everything in here. A few upcoming events that are happening. Um, so tomorrow there's, I found this on the People's Action uh, Slack or email list, and it just sounds very Yang Gangy. They're doing their uh, member organization, uh, United Vision for Ohio, is piloting this texting campaign that is meant to kind of reach out to and understand where some very extremist conservatives like find their beliefs and their news and understanding how they've come to that system, just to you know help kind of build a foundation for you know having conversations going forward and getting past some of that polarization. Um, that's out there. So if you're interested in that, there is a, a bit, a little link there that you can click or type into your browser and sign up to join it. And I'm, this is kind of the launch, the launching like first one. So there will be more in the future. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting new initiatives coming out of there. So I wanted to share that. Um, California Yang Gang is also having a policy nerd night on the 21st. So next Sunday, and they're going to be talking about how to humanize healthcare. Um, I don't believe they've done the panelist reveal yet, but you know, if you follow them, just check that out. And there's also a really cool Facebook live stream coming up um, about basic income pilots, um, focusing mostly on the one in Hudson, New York. So that's going to be on April 5th, and you can find the Facebook event at that link. Sign up and watch it if you would like. You know, there's been a lot of this kind of energy also with the release of a the information from Mayor Tubbs uh, UBI trial. So here's another one we're gonna be learning more about, which is really great. And the, uh, in case you missed it slide, uh, two weeks ago, we chatted with Rank the Vote. So you can get that conversation at that link there. Um, we, the income movement did their quarterly state of the movement, uh, movement meeting with the Gerald Huff Fund for Humanity, Economic Security Project, Inherit Good and Humanity Forward. So if you wanna figure out what's happening in kind of the greater ecosystem, that's a great, uh, uh, video to watch. And then there was also a grassroots town hall between Mayor Tubbs and Andrew Yang, 
um, then you can check out that link if you want to catch up on what you might have missed. This is ongoing, um, mostly just here. So you can come to the slide and click the links, bailoutthepeople.com, run by income movement. So many great actions to take part in there. Upcoming candidate support. The default slide, if you want to hook up with the Yang campaign, here you go. They've changed their volunteer orientation to an on-demand one rather than like a Sunday only. Um, so you can go watch the video, get connected through that mobilized link right there, their quick start. Um, and then Yenny, do you want to fill us in on, I thought this was awesome. And then anything that might be on the next slide. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is an event that's happening on Thursday night. Um, and we are going to be having Serenity Jones, who's a local radio for person here, um, hosting the event. The six comedians, there's um, bios for them on the Facebook event page, as well as in that bit.ly link. Um, I'll copy and paste them after I finish talking. Um, but so this event's going to be starting at seven, probably will go to around 730 um, and Eastern time because I'm in Massachusetts. Um, so I'm running for Worcester City Council, uh, which is in Central Mass. If you could go to the next slide. And we've got a bunch of events coming up. We've got comedy night this Thursday. Next Thursday is pet care first aid. Then the following, I believe it's Friday, might be Wednesday. I'm not sure what days of the week things are anymore. Um, but the last day of the month, every month I'm doing karaoke. And then we've got um, a couple of big volunteering asks um, that I've highlighted in bold. Those are the ones that I need most urgently. So if anyone's interested in helping out being a phone banking captain, basically helping make sure everyone in the Zoom room knows what's going on. Um, and then phone banking, obviously, we've got 14 hours of calls that need to be made approximately based on like 25 calls an hour. Um, so that is if you can donate even an hour of your time, it would be extremely helpful um, because if 14 of us make an hour of calls, we're done. Um, but those are the three days that we're doing phone banking. Um, that's Thursday, Saturday and Monday. Um, Saturday, we've got two times that are broken up. Um, and then once you've come to one of these phone banks, you're open and welcome to doing these calls on your own time within the, the windows that we'll be setting up. Um, this will be through um, Vote Builder, through VAN, um, and you will need to utilize either your own phone or, your, or a Google Voice number. Um, so thank you very much. And please come on Thursday to... Uh, comedy night. I love the idea of a comedy night. I miss like comedy and just like live anything, comedy, mm -hmm. concerts, music, theater, anything. I miss it, but we try hard with Zoom. <laughs> um, do you have anything you want to plug, Kyle, since you're on the call? Um, or... Yeah, well, we just had our first <laughs> fundraiser last night. Um, we Hold did. Night... I want to introduce you first, though. Oh, Kyle Hudson. Um, is running for mayor in Westchester, Pennsylvania, um, and is a uh, Yang Gang as well. So getting more Yang Gang running for candidates. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I just realized we didn't say like what you were running for. So I wanted to put that out there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Westchester is the county seat of Chester County, Pennsylvania. Um, and I am I'm running for mayor on the Democratic primary. And a lot of stuff has happened recently uh, that has put us in a very strong position. So uh, we were very excited last night. We had our first primary, uh, our first fundraiser, and we far exceeded our expectations, which we were very happy. We did. Uh, we watched Night of the Living Dead. We live streamed Night of the Living Dead because it's public domain. And then we had like a little conversation about stuff in town and like, what's scary? You know, what's spooky in town? Right. Um, but it was a lot of fun and we raised a bunch of money and, uh, I also could use some volunteers. Um, I'll put my website and, uh, and donation link down at the bottom. Any support that you can give us would be amazing. Um, we are running a very tight race with, uh, currently there are four people in the field, but it looks like there's a lot of like weird inside baseball and one of the candidates is knocking the other candidate off the ballot, which is creating all this stuff. So we're just being positive and staying out of all of it and just focusing on our mission, which is helping the folks in town. Um, our main, one of our main issues is uh, setting up a three, one, one system because I've spent the last four years working very closely with our government um, 
I helped launch our opioid task force four years ago uh, with our current mayor. And uh, I found that one of the biggest problems is that people, there's resources and funds and, and stuff out there for folks, but a lot of times people don't know that it's out there. And I thought it'd be really cool if we could set up a 311 system where people could just call and be connected to addiction resources or there's a pothole in front of my house. So there's a lot of stuff I'm doing. Uh, my website's kylehudson.com. Um, I'll drop all the links in the uh, in the the chat below. But thank you so much. And any support y'all can give would be absolutely amazing. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Um, I had something that I forgot to mention. Um, my fundraising right now, I've got enough to do the first third of my mailers. I'm working towards the second third, which I'm going to need by... Um, the 22nd. Right now we've got about um, a little over um, a little over $1,200 we need to get to $3,400 to get that second mailer sending out. Um, and these are going out to different parts of the district. So um, any amount that you could donate is also greatly appreciated. And I'm sure Kyle is probably fundraising as well. Um, so happy this to- This is for everybody. Help we each other. Our, <laughs> yes, yeah, the uh, pull our resources, and we should yeah. get in touch after this. Um, Definitely, we help each other on some of the fringy stuff. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll message you my email. Hmm. Awesome, awesome to have two candidates on plug in, and then especially yeah, good job. thanks for, for being it's an great, all having the courage and doing that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, it's, it's honestly, I've been very fortunate and I'm just trying to give back to my community because I've been so lucky. And uh, I think everyone should get involved at the level that they can. I'm just fortunate to be able to do this. So if anyone is thinking about running or has questions about how to run for office, because this is my second time doing this, um, I'd be happy to show you like how to get plugged into the party and all that kind of stuff. Cause uh, there's a lot, that needs to get done. And there's a lot of different levels. You don't have to necessarily just run for office in order to, you know, move our, our goals forward. So if anyone has any questions, I'll, I'll put my email in the, in the chat. Awesome. Thank you. And now we're going to go to, you know, the reason we're all here. We're chatting with uh, Fred, the felon, Ramey of Truckers for Yang fame um, about what he's been doing on Clubhouse lately. And I'm actually going to pass it off to H Hannah because she's kind of been tag teaming with them on there and they're doing a lot of great work. So Hannah, you want to lead yeah. our conversation? <laughs> yeah. Welcome Fred, partner in crime. Yay. So, <laughs> so um, I guess I'll just start off. Uh, how did you find out, found out, find out about Clubhouse? Like, how long have you been on there? What's the story there? Uh, I've been on there about a month. I think Dan Weber told me about it and so, well, I heard about it, and then I was like, hey, how do you get on Clubhouse? And I guess it was an invite-only situation. So Dan Weber threw me an invite, and then the rest is history. So did you go into it wanting to advocate for UBI on that platform, or were you just kind of hanging out? Uh, I was just hanging out, but, like, the conversations, the way the conversations flow, like – people say things and you're like, man, UBI would solve for that. Or a scenario happens and you're like, man, that wouldn't happen if we had a UBI, I bet. Or, and then some people understand a UBI and then some people are like, yeah, I like a UBI, but I'm not willing, I don't have the courage or the, or the, the decency, the human decency to fight for it. So that's where I come in. All right. So, uh, what are some, I guess, interesting conversations you've had on the platform so far? Well, I think, like for example, I've had some uh, some interesting inf uh, conversations around. So there's a lot of, and you've been on there with me, so is Eileen. There's a lot of uh, conversations centered around dating. Right. What? So I just, yeah, there's a ton of, there's, there's a ton Jeez. of rooms, shoot your shot, but there's also like, there's also, uh, dating rooms that are very transactional. Right. So, and very ground ruley, if you will, it's like, um, you know, 
how do you feel about a guy paying for the first date or a woman paying for the first date? Um, and in my experience with like dating, I'm not, you know, I mean, these are just things I've never even pondered or thought about because I've had money and the person that I was dating had money. So there was no, there was no big issue on who was going to pay for a date. Right. Um, but it, just like a small conversation like that, like, I'm, you know, like it's, it's easy to just say, Hey, you know, um, not trying to be goofy here, but uh, if you know, if we're worried about who's going to pay for a date, I like I'm worried about like when I go on a date, I'm worried about like do I connect with do I connect yeah. with the, the the person, right? And uh, that's probably my biggest priority is like do I connect with the person? Does the person connect with me? Do I can I see a, a future with this type of person? That kind of thing, right? And so. When we have that kind of conversation, it's an easy in for, <laughs> hey, you know, if we had a universal basic income and both parties, both male and female or male and male, female and female, depending on the the um, scenario of the relationship, uh, if both parties uh, had a universal basic income, if we all had a floor to stand on, there would probably be less negotiation on like, who's going to pay for a date. And then also uh, a lot of times, you know, like the stimulus pops up when we talk, like I like stock rooms. That's my thing. I like stock rooms. And then uh, I like political, political or they have rooms about the, not only politics, but the, the cultural pot of politics, like, um, you know, anti-woke versus woke rooms, things like that. Right. And so a lot of times different scenarios pop up and then it's just a or I, I tell you another one that I like uh, c- scenarios and situation that pop up. We have a lot of math, data, AI, somebody, somebody's, somebody's, uh, so, so, somebody's uh, microphone is on. I just muted. Sorry. Uh, OK. Okay, so there is a math data AI room. And, well, there's always a math data AI. Like, there's always a tech, you know, like a a nerd room, basically. And so it's an easy in, like, hey, you know, like, what are we going to do with, like, what are we going to do with all the, the jobs we're automating away? You know, and then you could come in with, like, different, different, uh, data points or different statistics uh, because a lot of times people don't really know what the fourth industrial revolution is, but they're building the fourth industrial revolution, which I find very, very troubling, very interesting. That's like, what's the fourth industrial revolution? Oh, the thing I'm building, (laughs) you know, when I talk to people. And so these are the type of conversations that, no, literally. (laughs) I know. It's yet. No. It's like the thing you're building. Yeah, it's the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah, it's the, the part where we, we automated the human people out of the equation, right? And so a lot of times when I go into my stock rooms, I talk about this too. I say, I look for stocks where we're cutting out, um, we're cutting out humans out of the equation. So any stock that has a human, that, that where we're cutting humans out of the equation I always look for super high profit margins and I invest because I in the future will be automated away. And so there's, there's kind of like a, for me, I'm always coming down to, I want to be able to have enough money in the market so I could pay my house off and, uh, and be financially free before I get automated away. And the easiest way to do that and the companies that have the highest profit margins will be companies where there's no humans to pay out for their um, uh, part as part of the profit margin, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, hey, Fred, so the, uh, before we yeah, go uh, get too far into the conversation, um, someone was asking about basically how does Clubhouse work? 
Um, so I, I mean, I guess I can give a short explanation. So Clubhouse is a basically a voice chat app um, where you can go into different rooms where people are talking and um, you can just sit in the audience and listen, or you can actually be brought up to the stage and actually participate in the conversation. So that's like a basic uh, explanation of it. Yeah, and so when you go when you go into the app, the app is set up in such a way that you have friends. Like I follow Hannah and Hannah follows me. So one of the things that I like to do is I can search I can search for clubs or rooms on different uh, topics, or I can search my friends list and see where that person is. And many a times if you're like you want to hang out with your friends and your friends are in a room and it's really cool because if you see like if i see hannah john kevin lee eileen uh katie right all together i'm like oh wow we can like <laughs> and we've done this before we were like as the room starts to dwindle because the room the room the numbers in the room will build and then they'll dwindle dwindle depending on who comes in the room. So like if somebody comes in the room and they have like 50 or 100,000 followers, a lot of their followers will come into the room. If they bounce and their their followers will bounce, will bounce just because of the way that the algorithm is set up. So when there's these little intimate moment, moments and the room, the room gets into like 50 people, that's a really good opportunity for somebody like Hannah or Katie or myself to just say, all right, so I'm glad you mentioned that problem. I have a solution. Would you like to hear it? So the solution is a universal or the solution to, to the a universal basic income or the solution to a gridlock between uh, red and blue candidates is star voting or ranked choice voting or the solution to us paying two and a half times as much as any other country for healthcare is a single payer healthcare system um, where, you know, where we get to have choices and be able to negotiate with our, uh, our doctors. So these are the kind of, kind of things that I really focus on. And the culture of Clubhouse is pretty cool because if you're on Twitter and a problem is presented and you have a solution, your solution is just another person on the other end of a text line. You can't hear them. It's completely different. When you hear when you hear a person's voice, it's just different. You can you hear the joy, the anger, the the desperation the uh, the veracity of which they speak, the, the the surety in their voice that they know what they're talking about, or the unsurety, uh, and it's just the human element is completely different. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your? Okay, so you've kind of talked about your strategy a little bit and how you go into rooms and um, and I guess how you uh, operate in those rooms. So. Um, I guess like lay that out a little more clearly, like do you go in intending to hijack a conversation or uh, do you just go in for fun and it just happens to come up or what kind of, and also what kind of topics of rooms do you like, you generally rotate around? So I go, I go pretty much everywhere. I go, I go pretty much everywhere. Like I really like, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of diversity in rooms and then there's a lot of, um, segregation in rooms and what i mean by segregation is there's segregation uh career wise there's segregation racially there's segregation um uh with sexuality there's segregation in um in career path everything is segregated in certain certain ways in certain rooms and then other rooms are very, very inclusive where it's just like everybody. And so there's, I don't really have a specific, uh, a specific idea in mind. 
many a times. And then other times I do, like if there, if there is a room that has a specific, because the rooms have most of them, some of them do, some of them don't, but most of them have a topic of the room. If there's a specific topic of a room, when you go to your friends list, you can see the topic of what your friends are in and the topic of that room. If there's a juicy topic that I feel like a universal basic income could, it could come down to somebody in the room explaining how a universal basic income would uh, affect change for our community. I'll go in there immediately. And then uh, sometimes I'll just sit, I'll just sit back and listen. And many a times, one of the best strategy is when somebody presents a problem that a universal basic income could solve. And then that's, that's when you just sit and you just, you were laying in the weeds for 20 minutes and you were like, Hey, can I weigh in here? I think I have a, I think I might have a solution to said problem. Or another thing that I like to do is when people know that myself or someone else is a strong supporter of a universal basic income, I can ask a question that's just completely loaded where people will, they will know, oh, a universal basic income would solve for this. Like if I'm in an AI room, I, I don't have to talk about universal basic income all the time because I would say like 15, 20% of the people know about universal basic income. And I could just ask so that somebody else can answer the question like, hey, do you think, and then uh, do you think, or what do you think we should do with the with people that are being displaced by automation and, and technology and data and, and things of that nature? And someone may answer the question and then another person may offer like pushback to my, to that person's point. And that's where, that's where you could come in with the science and data around, uh, you know, like STEM field, STEM fields are 8% of the, 8% 8, 8 of the, uh, the career uh, population right now. So we're not going to believe that 8% is going to swallow up the, the 92% and uh, the amount of money they make with the amount of money that most people make, there'll still be the amount, same amount of money in the market. It'll just be in fewer and fewer hands and poverty will, will rate, will be raised exponentially if we don't try to solve for it with a universal basic income and how that money doesn't disappear. When we put the money out into our communities, the money doesn't, does, doesn't disappear. People spend that money, which, which generates a ton of job creation. So I wish I had a hard and fast rule on like how to go in. I would think the one thing is to, it's a contact sport. So if, and it's also part of the human mind, like if you see an opening for a universal basic income conversation, automatically your mind will start telling you. Robots clears. I hope you fucking die. I swear to God, I hate you motherfuckers. That was great. Fuck you. What was that? What is that? Someone please kick Edward Jones. Yeah, I was trying. It was just moving. I see. I was like slightly suspicious it might be who I was, but when I went and looked at the registration, it didn't look like, and that was all good. It's all good. It's it's one of our trolls. It's one of our. No, it's all good. It's all good. So like. That it's it just it's just a like that is a solid uh indicator that something is working like that that means nothing to me literally that means nothing to me that is like a that's like a vote right for every one of those is like twenty thousand votes I swear to you uh for universal basic income and and things like it uh, so I guess what I'm saying is a lot of times when you're, when, when you see a scenario that is, a, this is a contact sport. So when you see a scenario that 
you you see you can insert yourself and insert universal basic income or rank choice voting or one of these solutions that Andrew Yang had or or basic income movement has or one of these solutions. Uh, your brain will tell you, oh, no one will listen to me or, uh, you know, like th this is not the right. This is not the right room or there's that initial uncomfortability that your your body and your brain will go through. And you have to learn to like ignore that person because that's just like that's not where the uh that's not where the you know like the old saying like if you want to see fruit sometimes you got to go out on a limb and so uh and then when once you get people to agree hey that sounds good or yeah i, I believe in universal basic income one of the things i like to say to people is i say yeah, well, they say, yeah, I like it. And I say, I don't need you to like it. I need you to love it. And then, and, and I'll say, I'll say, the reason I need you to love it is because pe people nod for not nod their head for things they like, but they'll fight for things they love. And so, like, I just want to encourage you that if you love universal ba basic income, like, have the courage to fight for it. And join us in the movement like be part of the club you know like you, you know you don't have to be one of the cool kids you are the one of the cool kids you know <laughs> like kind of thing and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't i i you know i i wish i had a full full-fledged like i wish i had a hundred percent close rate on like convincing people of universal basic income i don't hannah doesn't eileen doesn't <laughs> It's a matter of like, okay, w are we going to make the effort? Because if we don't make the effort, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna advance the movement. So that's right, my yeah. viewpoint. Awesome, thank you, Fred. So I just want to respond to uh, Megan's comment saying that manage to, managing to weave it into the dating rooms, I'm impressed. So that actually brings me to a kind of a funny story where um, there's a lot of different rooms in Clubhouse and I happened to stumble into this satire room for venture capitalist pitches. So there was like a, a moderating team at the top and evaluating like ridiculous pitches and of course they're getting ridiculous questions in response and I somehow got um, it became like a shark in this VC pitch room and um, I wasn't even talking about basic income but what people do is that they look through your profile and uh, somebody saw my profile like talking about basic income and they contacted me and they're actually a producer for some media company and uh, they're looking to expand like a social impact media company and looking to collaborate. So there, there's like these possibilities that are um, that are there for Clubhouse, like totally unexpected. So for Fred, um, I want to ask you, what is, I guess, one of the most messed up things that has happened to you on Clubhouse? And what is like one of the most best or unexpected things that's happened? Uh, well, I'd say one of the most messed up things is just being uh be so, having a disagreement with somebody and it turning turn into like a food fight or like a you know a common a, a very common thing is to dis to disagree with somebody people break out the big guns with like oh you're you're this or you're that and I'm like no we do we just we see the world differently right and then and uh, other messed uh, other messed up things that happen is people tend to think a lot of times of like this or that very binary thinking and like for example i'm a i'm a bootstrap get it done do the work uh no excuses person so when people hear that they don't think a universal basic income and the ideas of a universal basic income could come from a person like me. And they're like astounded, right? Uh, so that I could do without that. I wish people could like understand that two things could be true. Uh, some of the best things is like people have reached, you know, people have reached out to me for like podcasts or like, hey, uh, we'd like to shoot a video with you sometime or 
just all kinds of different stuff, you know, because, and then, you know, I will say also too, if you're like, um, Hannah's a little bit more lefty than I am. And I'm more of a righty than she is. Not, not, um, not a little bit, a lot more lefty. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're, we're kind of, we kind of split this like this, right. She's, she's more left. I'm more right. Right. And, uh, uh, don't be afraid if you have like political ideas, you know, don't be afraid to like stick up for what you believe in. Uh, even, even if it, uh, does, even if it's not a popular thing. So if you believe like in Medicare for all, or you believe in whatever it is, right. Don't be afraid to, to, to stand up for those things and you'll have people that will gravitate toward, toward you. And then, I'll say that like some of your, like your haters, your, your haters are still, cause you have people that disagree with you to the point of like total hatred. Your haters are still there. They, they still give you attention. And this is an attention network. And so when people go to push back on you, that's not a positive, that, that's not a negative thing. When you're answering back to the people that are pushing back on you about a universal basic income, you're not answering back specifically to sway them. There are people in the audience that are listening. And so that's one of the huge positives. And you'll, I've gotten people that are, te- that te- that will text me or, or reach out to me on, on Instagram or this, that, and the third that will say, Hey, um, uh, way to deal with, whatever objection about UBI or, you know, whatever, whatever issue, you know what I mean? So I've had positives and negatives on both sides and it's been very interesting. Yeah. It's always fun tag teaming with you. (laughs) It's like, here's a conservative, here's a lefty liberal, but together we're both fighting for the same thing. So uh, I want to give Eileen uh, an opportunity to ask a question. Thanks so much, Hannah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Eileen Patterson. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, Fred. Uh, good to see you. And Hola. I um, first just wanted to say that, yeah, I love being in the clubhouse rooms with y'all and especially watching you and Hannah work dynamically together. It's just really inspiring. And I'm proud to be a part of like the Yang Gang clubhouse as well as just forming our little group and, and going around to these group uh, club rooms together, um, learning a lot. And I was just wondering if you could, one of the most inspiring things that I saw um, you guys accomplish was when there was that one big UBI room and then Hannah asked if she could do an after party room and then they pitched it and we had that after party room. And I watched like how you guys just, I don't think anybody left that room anti-UBI. I think every, I, people came into that room anti-UBI and I don't think anyone left our room um, anti-UBI. So I was wondering if you could just speak to that and yeah, and just how that all went down and how, how you and Hannah worked well, so well together like that. Well, one of the, one of the things that, that uh, facilitated, I, f- I felt like in the best interest for UBI is one of the, I think it was Drew that was running the room and he's just a guy that's into politics. Um, he's not particularly right or left. He's just really uh, centered. And he was like, Hey, I'm, I got, I have to go, but um I'll leave the room to a few moderators. And then there was a point where I was like, Hey, and then, or you guys can start a separate room. And I was like, Hey, can we start a separate room with Hannah being, you know, like setting up the room because we, we really, we really need to, to set things up the way clubhouse works is when you set up a room, and you set up a topic, then you can go to Clubhouse and say, hey, we had this much engagement for this particular topic, right? And so um, there was somebody that was like, yeah, I'll set up the room. I was like, hey, do me a favor. Let her set up the room because she's she's big in the UBI. Uh, and this other guy was a Uni, Unity 2020 guy, right? And so it's very, it, it, it was really good that a she was able to set up the room on the after party of somebody who had like i think that guy had like five thousand followers or something like that um 
and he was he had some guests that had 50,000 followers. So that was the first thing. The second thing was uh, people came in from that after party. And in my view, people were having different takes. And I think John was in there to John Ma. Um, John was in there and he was able to be kind of like a, a, I would say like he was a center. She's a lefty and I'm a, I'm more on the right. And the room was very well. Uh, it was just, it was, it had different opinions that weren't rooted in particular ideology about all these different things. It was so incredibly uh, centered and focused on UBI. And we were able to have like a productive conversation. I felt that people left with like, okay, um, what's the next step and how do I get involved? And we were able to have conversations on, okay, what's the next step? How do I get involved? So. Yeah, so the really interesting thing about uh, that first room that Drew started, um, the really interesting thing was that it wasn't planned. It was just, we just found it in my hallway. So like we went in there, it's like, oh, this is a room about UBI talking about the subject. And there was like a good number of people in the audience. So it was a real opportunity to talk about it. And uh, the best part is that all these people that we, that are not in our network are talking about UBI or want to learn about it. So it was like such a great opportunity. And then when we branched off into uh, that second UBI room that I started, uh, yeah, there was a, you know, just digging deeper into the, uh, into the uh, conversations that we were having from the first room, and it drew in more people who are UBI supporters, and just narrowing it down, and, um, and I was definitely pushing the whole, hey, it sounds like we're all on board with UBI, what do we do next, um, and get on board with income movement, here's, wh here's what's happening, uh, here's how it's so close to actually becoming a reality and just giving an update on what the movement is doing and the progress and just get people really excited for this idea that might be like an intellectual you know exercise for them but bringing that into reality and into basically having ubi in our lifetime so um that that's my um strategy for going into clubhouse for that um and oh, I had a thought and I totally missed it. Oh, uh, but yeah, there are lots of different opportunities in there, like um, even with the Mayor Tubbs conversation that had like almost a thousand people in there at one point. Um, I was able to get up on stage and ask them a question and see Hammer started following me. And then we had like an after party room for that also. And uh, just continue the conversation, meeting some uh, people that you probably would never meet like in the regular activist space. Uh, like I met somebody who was essentially running a uh, privately funded UBI pilot for two people in New Jersey. I mean, she's just like running this on her own and she's just like, and um, it was great to like bring her into the UBI community um, and get her connected with other people. So there's so many awesome things happening on Clubhouse and I'm working with Income Movement to actually build out programs um, and programs and you know, regular rooms and strategies uh, to build the conversation and not just in like an intellectual way, but in a real way also. And yeah, so it's great like working with Fred and a bunch of other Yang gang to um, implement that strategy. All right, so are there any other questions so far? No, I just want to say thank you guys so much. And thank you, Fred, so much for being here. I just, I know that you're on the road and really appreciate you taking the time and also for what you're doing in those clubhouse rooms. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, before we close out this portion, um, there are a bunch of um, clubhouse invites available between um, a few of us. So if you're interested in checking it out and have um, an iOS 13 um, or over, a compatible phone. Uh, we can help you get on Club Clubhouse and join in on the fun. Uh, and with that, uh, Fred, do you have any last words? Uh, just, just do it. You know, like have the conversation that you you think that you have the conversation that your brain tells you won't be productive. And uh, by the end of the conversation, you will be 
uh, more than pleased with the results. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Hannah. All right, yeah. back to you, Megan. <laughs> oh, I was about to just say thank you too, because I'm um I'm in Clubhouse, but I've not yet had that courage to generally talk or get up on stage in there. I'm in a very different world than the rest of you, but I'm working on it. And like hearing like how successful you have been is like you know inspiring. I'm still terrified, but I'm inspired. Um. <laughs> so, the, so, so let me let me uh, let me uh, kind of cover that with you. So mm -hmm. I have a few friends, like Lana is a friend of mine, or um, uh, I have like, I have a few friends that like don't really talk in big rooms. Like Kevin, Kevin Lee is not a big room guy, right? But he gets in a small room and then like he'll cut it loose, you know? So I would mm -hmm. recommend in that scenario, get into a room of like six to 10 people and then just like get up on stage and say, hey, how's it going and start talking. And then as you gain both confidence and uh, you, you're well, you're more polished with, you know, your acumen and how you speak. Um, and don't worry, like when you're speaking, don't worry about like, hey, do I sound okay? Right? Don't be nervous. Just Just say whatever and let the chips fall where they may, you know, like people are going to like you or they're not going to like you and um, focus on the people that like you, you know, and they are going to lift you up and, and just go where you're celebrated. So um, yeah, that's, that's just the encouragement I'd like to give you in that scenario. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and then Fred, I, you're, Oh, sorry, Megan. Yeah. I just want to say, Fred, your, your advice of go where you're celebrated. I've heard that. A couple of times you say that in the rooms and it's been like, I don't want to overstate it, but it's been life changing for me. It has been I yeah, think like really good advice. Like I'll go to a room and people will, people will be shitted in me and I'll just be like, check this out. Like I'm not a, I'm not a victim. I volunteer to be here. And guess what? I just volunteered to go somewhere else. Bye. Right. And I'll just hit the, there's a live, leave quiet, quietly button. And it's like the way of like hanging up. Right. And I'll just hit the leave quietly button and people will reach out to me and be like, damn, that was like, that just changed the whole room and it changed the other person. Right. Cause I want, I'm not calling them, uh, you know, a terrible person. I'm just saying like, look, it's obvious you don't want me here because of the way you're treating me and I'll go where I'm wanted. Click. Right. And then it's into conversation. I don't have to have this back and forth, angry, like, you know, thing. You know what I mean? And then, like, I go into these places and people are like, yay, it's Fred. You know what I mean? Same thing with you. You know, you go in there, it's like, hey, it's Eileen. The party just started, you know? So. Yeah. Thank you. And I guess I'll also just say it out loud on camera. Do you want to share your handle if people want to follow you on Clubhouse, Fred? Uh, mine is, I think it's gang, gang yang. Yeah. At gang yang. I think gang yang. It has gang an app symbol. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Does anyone else want to chime in on their thoughts? I don't know who else. I know I've added one, uh, one person to the clubhouse community during this call. <laughs> I had one, uh, reach out for an invite. So we're growing. Actually, Fred, um, uh, you might want to warn people about your profile. <laughs> Oh yeah. Look cooking. Oh yeah. So so I have a piece of toast that says I am Fred. I made I made the uh, I I made the awesome misfortune of like uh changing trying to change my name, and then you can't change it back. So my name is not my real name. So yeah. Uh, Your picture so if you, says I am Fred. So you're good. If it says yeah, I am the, Fred. If if the, if you see a picture of a a piece of white toast that says i am fred right um with like burnt toast of i am fred that's me and so i have support trying like i've emailed support they'll get to it in three or four months who knows <laughs> you know what i mean it could be three or four weeks it could be three or four days who knows you know what i mean so you know they, they're working they're working a multi uh you know multi uh trillion dollar app with like 30 employees so we'll see nice. <laughs> 
Oh. Any, I, I any... have a quick question. Oh, um, yeah, go, go someone ahead. has one. Go for it. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, uh, I've heard your name, Fred the Felon, many times, so it's awesome to finally get to meet you in person or, you know, Zoom push. 21st century, 2020 person. Um, were, were you running, for, was there, like, what's your 20, like, if there was, like, a plan for 2021, it sounds like Clubhouse is a big opportunity. Like, I'm just kind of curious what your 2021 looks like, I guess. Uh, my 2021 looks like just working and driving a truck and investing in the stock market and uh, get be, like being on Clubhouse is the way I stay up, right? Like if I'm super tired, like I, I just, like I don't drink coffee and I don't, I don't do drugs, right? So um, it's like the way I stay up while I'm driving like 11 hours in a day, right? That's a great so, way to do it. <laughs> yeah, so like if you could imagine – like there's a conversation where two pe like people are offering pushback, right? Um, on political issues, how how that would the the char the electrical charge that that offers, and how how you know you're just like it gives you kind of a a little bit of uh spark, and you know you're not gonna be asleep whereas if you know I, I was just rolling down the road you know at two o'clock in the morning um i'd probably fall asleep if that makes sense so to me to me i have kind of a schedule i do my stock stuff in the morning i do my political stuff in the evening and then i'll do my the do you notice the rooms, Hannah, how they, they move from the time frames, the slots move? Wait, what do you mean? Like, it's like hella drama at night, and then yeah. it's square. It's like square as fuck during the day. Sorry, I cursed. I love that. But, you put in that signal chat. You were like, day rooms suck. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was just like, you know, well, not only did day rooms suck, but like, so half, half of the people that are stock, like some of the people that are stock traders, they'll wake up at 930 Eastern to just check the market or whatever. Um, but they don't really, there are people who don't really talk very much. Um, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But by like two o'clock, you can go in and see what other people are doing. And so when you see that your friends are doing something, it's like, oh, I want to be a part of this because I might catch Hannah saying something. Do you know what I mean? Or like what, what, one of the crazy things is like you'll follow somebody and then you'll see how whack, how whack job they are. Like you go to another room that's covering something's completely different than what the room that you met them in. And they're covering some kind of whack job, uh, like scenario. And you're like, man, this person is like either for this person is freaking QAnon, and I had no idea. Has it ever happened to you, uh, Hannah? Kind of, yes, yes, um, yeah. This one person, they got into a whole drama, and they got kicked out of their own room that they started. So yeah, there's lots of drama that happens. But I would say, like, don't be afraid to enter rooms with weird topic names because uh, the topic name could be chosen to draw people, and also it can be inherited. So like, rooms can go through different phases. So where it started is not necessarily where it's going to end. So that's pretty cool. And also kind of goes 24 hours because there's like a global presence on the app. So I yeah. know I've fallen asleep on the app a couple of times. And I know one time I've tucked, you know, Fred into bed with Kevin Lee in a room together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and just so they're out there too, for like what I'll say is that I've actually made like, I mean, it's so funny. It's called Clubhouse. And then you actually do fart, start to far, form these like clubhouses, like where I have met people. Um, and now there's like this like close knit group of us that get together every night in this room called uh, unwind and uh, talk shit and relax. And it's just the same little group of people that come in there. And, and now actually two of those people are now yang yang, you know, just for me hanging out and having a genuine relationship with them and having re real conversations and just organically chit chatting. 
and now they've joined, you know, Yang Gang Clubhouse, which Dan Weber started. Um, so it's, it's cool. You know, it's another recruitment tool as well. Um, if you can build real relationships and show and, and get people interested. So, yeah, it's really, it's just starting for what we can do with it. So I'm really excited to see what Hannah um, is doing over at income movements, like really plot out a, a strategy. So thank you again, you guys. Thank you. Uh, last call for any questions, I guess, and then we'll go off the live stream and we can transition into a hang uh, for anyone who just wants to sit around and chat uh, talk pretty casually. Talk. <laughs> yeah, talk, talks with toxins. So I finished my toxin though. I got to refill. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, re but um, so thank you so much for joining us on our um, Sunday Night Live. Um, We'll hold next Sunday a Talks with Toxins, and then we'll have another Sunday Night Live on March 28th. So you can hop in or watch the live stream for that. Stonks. <laughs> and... Yeah. That's my thing. Stonks. <laughs> yeah. Check out the stock. I was going to say, Timothy, uh, by the way, for the live stream, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not a financial advice. Do your <laughs> own due diligence, Wh whatever. Like, um, but, you know, I love math. Um, I would say check out this stock called Open Door. Okay. Technologies. I was just looking at your Twitter and I, I, I noticed the, the diamond hands. So I had to, I had to make a reference. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'll check. It's uh, open. Yeah. Open. Yeah. Cool. Check it out. Okay. All right. So everyone joining us on the live stream, have an awesome night. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next week or in two weeks. <laughs> Thank you.